on a long list of companies that you would guess once had an airline, Hooters doesn't even appear anywhere at all. And yet, back in 2003, Hooters Air did indeed come into existence. Founded by the Hooters of America restaurant owner, Robert Brooks. The whole idea of Hooters Air was to not only advertise Hooters in general as a restaurant chain, but also try to make flying fun again. Robert felt that airlines in general had become very stagnant, very boring. It just wasn't fun to fly. And he wanted to inject just a little bit of pizzazz into the whole flying idea. It only lasted three years, however. You might think that that might be because of mismanagement, like the last few airline videos I've done, but in truth, Hooters Air fell not really because they necessarily did anything truly unspeakably wrong. It was just a lot of bad timing and things beyond their control. To begin with, if you don't know what Hooters is, or don't get the joke, then you're probably too young to understand. And that's okay. I actually have to be really careful with how I phrase things during this video because YouTube will demonetize me like crazy if I say something a little too untorched. But Hooters makes it very hard for me since even just their name is slang for a certain part of the female anatomy. When it comes to the restaurant, the whole point of going there is well, if you ask someone who actually goes there, they'll be like, oh man, they have great wings. And yeah, okay, I believe that's why you go there. Now, the waiting staff of Hooters are primarily young women, generally known as Hooters girls, and they are clad in very tight shirts and short shorts. And that's it, that's, that's the gimmick. Simple, yet incredibly effective, Hooters has become very successful, boasting over 430 locations worldwide, as of the making of this particular video. Hooters Incorporated was first founded in Clearwater, Florida, on April 1st, 1983, by six different businessmen. They actually founded it on that date for a reason. They really thought that the whole thing was going to fail, which is not a solid outlook for spending a lot of capital to start up a company. Like, like really, guys? But to their surprise, it was actually remarkably successful. The first restaurant opened its doors on October 4th, 1983, and started doing really well pretty much immediately. In 1984, a man by the name of Hugh Connerty bought the rights to Hooters from the original owners, but then Robert H. Brooks and a group of Atlanta investors bought out Hugh Connerty. And Brooks was the real game changer when it came to the company. He pushed for rapid expansion of the brand and is largely responsible for making it a worldwide success. If you ever wonder why you know what Hooters is as a restaurant, well, you can thank Brooks. And he's also the one who decided, eventually, to start an airline. Brooks started looking for an airline to buy in 2002, and eventually he managed to reach a deal with Pace Airlines, which was an American charter airline that hadn't really been doing super well in those years. Once he got his hands on it, he began laying the groundwork to bring it to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Treating Pace Airlines as a parent company, he then formed Hooters Air underneath. His reasons for doing this, well, there's a few of those. For one thing, he wanted to use the airline as a bit of a moving billboard. It was an unconventional means of generating awareness for the Hooters brand, which generating awareness for the brand was one of Brooks's biggest strengths. But likewise, he thought attaching the brand to the airline would attract attention, and it did. People were genuinely curious about, hey, why was Hooters running an airline? It was just one of those things that was so bizarre that you almost didn't believe it. In fact, even now, as I tell you, you may still not believe me, but I promise you, this is a thing that absolutely happened. And they commenced operations March 6, 2003. While tying Hooters to an airline may have been really unorthodox, its actual operations as an airline weren't super bizarre, at least in terms of the actual flights and the scheduling. Pace was a charter airline, but when Brooks took over, he wanted Hooters Air to start offering regularly scheduled flights, like a typical airline. 
though they did still do charter service as well. Over the course of their existence, their fleet only consisted of about seven aircraft, all of which were Boeing and mostly versions of the 737, though they did have at least one 757, they were headquartered in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and indeed, the big draw was getting people into Myrtle Beach, though their scheduled flights did take people as far as Las Vegas. And interestingly, they were marketing themselves towards golfers, which was an effort to bring casual and tournament players to Myrtle Beach's over 100 championship golf courses, which is an oddly specific thing to do, Yet, early on, it did seem to work. The airfares were a flat rate, $129 each way, which wasn't exactly the cheapest rate, but it also wasn't that expensive either. It was affordable. Their first flight took place out of Gary, Indiana, and they did recruit some of their own servers that already worked in the restaurants to work on board the flights. Now, a lot of articles say that they were acting as the flight attendants, but that is absolutely 100% not true at all. First of all, they literally couldn't do that, as flight attendants are supposed to be FAA certified. Their servers obviously weren't accredited in that manner. They were forbidden to operate any machinery on board the airplane, so they weren't permitted to close the doors or even push the food carts. And as such, they had regular flight attendants in addition to two of the Hooters girls. Flight attendants also didn't dress like the Hooters girls. Their attire was a lot more traditional, perhaps a bit more stylish than a typical flight attendant uniform, but still resembling what you would expect a regular flight attendant to wear. So why were the Hooters girls even there at all? Well, other than just looking pretty, cause yeah, their job was mostly to entertain the guests and help the flight attendants if they could. A big part of the flight was playing trivia games and just talking with the passengers, making them feel right at home. The Hooters girls were there to make the flight fun, whereas the flight attendants, and of course the rest of the crew, like the pilot, were there to do the actual jobs of an airline crew and get people to the destination safe. The Hooters girls weren't even allowed to serve food, and you might think this wouldn't be very much fun for the girls, since they weren't really allowed to do all that much, but based on interviews, many find it a nice change of pace from typical restaurant duties. Their shifts were round trip, running from about 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. A long day to be sure, but it was nice to do something different, at least as far as they were concerned. On top of that, in terms of actually operating the airline, there's no articles that say that anything really went wrong in the maintenance department, or even just getting flights. They seem to have done everything right. The planes were well maintained, they didn't suffer from frequent delays or anything, and the cities they flew to actually praised them for bringing more people into the area, particularly Myrtle Beach, which did tie some further economic success directly to the airline's promotion of their city. The customers enjoyed flying with them too. In order to make the flights a lot more comfortable, rows of seats were actually removed from the aircraft, which provided people with a 34 inch, 86 centimeter seating pitch to all passengers. That leg room is comparable to many carriers' business classes, and this was something that anyone could get just for flying with them. The seats were also upholstered in dark blue or black leather, and during those years, a lot of major carriers were eliminating in-flight frills to cut costs. But Hooters Air defied that logic, continuing to supply complimentary meals to all their customers on trips that lasted over one hour. So, all this sounds great, actually. I mean, regardless of what you think of Hooters as a brand, whether you think it's exploitative or not, it seems like that when it comes to flying an airplane, even if you remove the Hooters girls from the equation, they were doing everything right. So why did they fail in just three years? They ceased operations April 17, 2006. What's the deal? Well, it is like I said, most of the reason Hooters Air failed actually has nothing to do with anything they really did wrong. They continued to operate pretty consistently during the height of their existence, continuing to do everything possible to make their guests happy, but they weren't able to generate enough cash to really expand the way the restaurant had. And while Brooks had no previous airline experience, and still managed to do a lot of things right, he did one major thing pretty wrong, and that's timing. Remember, they started this new airline in 2003. That was like the worst possible time to start a new airline. Because it was a bad time to be any airline in general. The 9-11 terrorist attacks had just happened two and a half years prior, 
and it was still fresh in people's minds. In the years after that terrible day, a lot of people were deathly afraid to fly. Having a fear of flying is actually a pretty common fear among people in general, but 9-11 amplified that tenfold. And even major carriers were struggling in the years after that, let alone a brand new one like Hooters. On top of that, there was a lot of competition they weren't able to deal with. Southwest, in particular, was offering lower fares, and people were willing to pay a lower price, even if you wouldn't necessarily get the pretty girls. And the cost of jet fuel was going up, and therefore the cost of operation was going up, putting a strain on the economic viability of the whole thing. In the end, all commercial services were suspended on January 9th, 2006, and they ceased all operations April 17th. Later, Hooters of America would report that they'd lost $40 million on the whole airline thing, so it was never a profitable venture for them, even though they did handle it well. Pace Airlines actually did continue on for another three years with their charter services, though they would eventually cease operations as well in September of 2009. But since that time, Hooters Air has gone down in history as just one of the weirdest things that has ever happened. There's a lot of misinformation about it, mostly due to the nature of the brand at large, but as I said, as an airline, they actually handled themselves okay. They just couldn't deal with the economy as it was at the time. I doubt we'll ever see anything quite like Hooters Air ever again. And as for Bob Brooks, well, he would actually pass away just a few months after the airline closed at the age of 69. Hooters as a chain, however, still continues. And you could probably find one of their locations somewhere near you. I hear they have good wings. Yep, the wings. That's why you go there. And for no other reason. Definitely. And when it comes to the legacy of Hooters Air, well, I guess it's best summed up with one of their slogans. Fly a mile high with us. I get it. Shut it, Nappa. And with that, a special thank you goes to all my underwater train finders, some dude 267, Orange Glass, Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitsun 131-232, Josh Johnson, Metal for Life Guy, Anzac A1, Arthur Roy, Tommy Rossini, Lord Captain Von Thrust the Third, Joshua Long, Brian. Jack Carson's Railroad Videos, Hayden DeGrow, Master of None, Lord Hog 444, That Guy with a Beard, Mark Holding, Murder Drones Doll, A Person 723, DM Trouble Typhoon, Alfonso Lapuche, Royal Hudson 2860, Icerfer 1405, Charles Kwiatkowski, Matthew Wolf, Ohio Trucker 1, Mr. Sleepy, Matt Weaver, Alaric Jaspers, Tom Red Lion, NS Productions 8104, Hannah Bird, Hendrick Motorsports Fan 5, Wheeljack 8401, Rescues Greyhounds, Dr. Racer 78, The Baxter, and Caleb Crosswhite. Till next time, this is Darkness, and then we do all a fond farewell.